Uh, not good. You know, anytime you uh, you know, only score nine points, obviously the six of it being in the last minute, um, it's just not good enough. I mean, this is a, re a results-based business. Um, results on, on offense usually means points. Point. And the more points you score, the better chance you have to win football games, right? Especially the way our defense played. They, they absolutely performed at such a high level that, uh, you know, it stinks that uh, we didn't get it uh, done on our side. Um, you know, you look at the first half, as sloppy as it was, particularly in the first quarter, and then you go in there at halftime, only down 10-3, um, and you look at it, and you have 176 of yards of offense, but you're 0 for 6 on third down with a turnover and basically almost a second turnover in terms of uh, you know the, the catching the ball on third and five, and uh, and it getting stripped out, or you know, and, and next thing you know, you're kicking a field goal. So um, it. it, it Felt a lot worse um, going in, into halftime because you didn't get the results you wanted in terms of the, the scoreboard. Uh, but a lot of stuff to, to fix in every single room. So because because it was so close, even though you guys are making those mistakes, not converting on third down, is that something that? How to use as a teaching point, like oh, for sure. I mean, every game that you go through from week one to week seventeen is going to be a you know a learning experience, especially for again, it's 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 getting old. But you know, there's a lot of guys out there playing their their first bit of NFL football uh, with with Brees and with Garrett and with uh, Max Mitchell, and then you look at the second year guys and AVT and Michael Carter and Elijah Moore. Um, there's a, there's still a lot of young guys out there that are learning how to play this game, you know. So. Um, there's there's a ton of teaching moments. What, what was your reaction when you saw? I'm, I'm sure that's not what you wanted. 59 pass attempts. I know right. It happens in the game. But what was your reaction? Yeah. No. It. it, it uh, suck for me looking at, at that at the end of the game uh, when you get that stat sheet which you look at it for about 10 seconds and you put it down because I mean, you can you know how it kind of unfolded um, when you look at it from before uh, it got to 24 to 3 I want to say we were 16 runs to, to 23 passes or something like that 22 passes uh, not counting third down which is semi balanced but still not balanced enough um, you know so um, in the in the fourth quarter you got to fight the urge to try to get it all back and one, um, 24 to three. I know ESPN analytics would say it's probably about a 99% chance that, that they're going to win. We'll never feel that way. We always feel like there's a fighter's chance. But, you know, shoot, I watched my brother's game later in that day where, you know, they didn't have um, – have the, the the best performance that they you know have obviously put out the last few years and and I thought he did a great job in the fourth quarter of running the football just to just to not throw the ball every down to give the line a chance and and uh, you know they eked out some yards there in the in the fourth to, to somewhat get it uh, back involved. I think you guys only had something like one one throw that was downfield like twenty yards or more in the air or whatever is, is that a product of you know the pass? Yeah, there's the I mean there's a there's a ton of ton of deals right I mean it's um, I, I got. Call the plays to push down the field. When I call them, they got to be at the right time, uh, and we got to be able to hold up uh, to to be able to push the ball down the field. And then the quarterback's got to make the right read, and the receiver's got to get from point A to point B, uh, you know, as soon as as possible. Um, that's a defense with what they're doing. They're going to make you earn it, and it's kind of becoming a trend around this league. I mean, you can. We're, we're never just going to throw it up, uh, you know, and, and just pray that we, we come down with plays when there's two guys on one. It's just not going to happen. That's just not it's just not how it works. Um, but, uh, you know, we did call some plays down the field. They just happen to be in some type of two shell where it's dome and, and, and it's telling you to check it down. They did a very good job, I thought. Um, you didn't know what their tendencies were going to be, we, um, you know, because it's obviously his first time calling a defense in the NFL. I thought they did a great job of playing their dome type quarters which is almost like a it's a it's it's such a soft I, I like to joke it's almost like a prevent quarters because they're just forcing you to check it down and they if they weren't doing that they were bringing some heat um the problem was when they were bringing a four-man rush they were getting pressure on us too and that can't happen that's uh that's got to be uh fixed and that's got to be fixed now Gary Wilson uh I mean had limited amount of snaps but it's productive what did you see from him uh last week against Baltimore yeah, the game's just not too big for him. You never know, um, you know, going into the first game. I, I, I had a pretty good idea of how he was going to react, but I've also felt that way about other rookies. And all of a sudden, the, you know, the bright lights of a Sunday get pretty big. And I'm, I won't mention any names, but some guys that play at a high level of football uh, in today, you know, in the NFL right now. Uh, for Garrett, it, 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 it's just football for him. You know, um, he didn't he didn't get obviously the rep count that we all wanted. Uh, I think Salas 
talked about kind of our initial plan going in with some 13 and stuff like that. Um, when you're not moving the ball in the first quarter outside of two chunk plays, but but again, not being able to convert on third down, we, we didn't get the rotation of personnel groups that, that we initially wanted, you know, so. Um, but for, for Garrett, you know, we, we can see how dynamic he is in the past game. He, he's um, an awesome guy to coach. It's just going to be, you know, he, he's not going to be just at one position. He's got to be at our F position. He's got to be at our Z and just him be able to operate every single play, not just the pass plays where he knows he's getting the ball, but but also, you know, when uh, we're running the ball, when he's running the fake jet sweeps and stuff like that, that operation needs to get to 100%, and, uh, and he knows that. That's said about 13 personnel. I mean, I think everybody thought, tight ends would be more involved and I understand the flow of the game and everything like that but what did you see there that you know CJ wasn't targeted and uh, I think you had five catches from tight ends on the day. Yeah, I think, you know, we, um, again, we, we went in uh, with a plan in 13. Um, you know, we, we uh, hit that explosive on the first play in the run game, came right back. Our plan was to go, you know, right into turbo 13. Uh, we didn't show any of that last year, so that's going to be an unscouted look, and especially when you're going up against a coordinator that you have nothing to scout off of except for them playing in, on Saturdays the, the year before. Uh, you're trying to give them something that, you know, they're not going to be ready for. Um, you know, we called a quick game that we felt really good about, and uh, one wasn't open, but our check down we thought was going to be explosive. And next thing you know, the D line's in, in our quarterback's lap, you know. So uh, there were going to be opportunities for, for CJ Conklin, uh, Cage, uh, but, uh, you know, just didn't come to fruition. How did, uh, I know it was just against Air, but how did Zach Lowe get him out there back on the practice field? It was, it was good to get him back out there, you know. Um, Obviously, you know, it's been some time since that Philly game. Uh, so, you know, and I, I've seen him throw, uh, you know, in the indoor and stuff like that. And uh, But uh, just to be able to get out there, do some seven-on-seven, seven, um, you know, it was good. It's frustrating when you lose. I, I understand that. But coming off all the momentum everybody thought you had and everything with all the changes in the offseason, first game of the season, how much more disappointing was that that you didn't put out what, what you worked on? Uh, yeah, I mean it's going to be disappointing regardless. You know, I don't I don't really care who steps out on the field. You expect to to, to get the job done, and we didn't. You know, and, and there's a number of reasons uh, that we didn't that we've already talked about. But uh, again, when you when you go 0 for 8 um, on third down, uh, basically through the first three quarters when it was still a game, uh, it's hard to win football games. You know, we had we had. Um, Two times inside the 27-yard line there in the in the uh, in the first half and came uh, away with only three points, and both times in the 20-yard line we had a third and four and a third and five. Those those are on schedule third down opportunities that we have to make, and we had opportunities to make those plays and we didn't, and we got to get that fixed. Uh, and and again, it starts with me in, in terms of getting them the the right play call and and where it just makes their life even easier. How did uh, Max Mitchell hold up when you guys went back and watched? Uh... It, Max did a good job. Max did exactly uh, how I think myself, Sala, uh, John Benton, the old line coach, and all his teammates thought Max would play. It wasn't too big for him. Uh, certainly wasn't perfect by any means, but um, he's, again, he's a guy that's just ascending um, in terms of just, you know, every single day at practice getting better. And, you know, some, sometimes with offensive linemen, when you don't notice them, Watching the tape, that's a good thing <laughs> because, uh, you know, unless you're uh, the Trent Williams of the world where, you know, you're just pancaking guys left and right, you usually don't go noticed. And, uh, and for the most part, he went unnoticed, which, again, is a, is a good thing. What did you see from Joe? What did you think of how Joe played and what gives you guys confidence to stick with him like Robert? Yeah, I mean, I thought, uh, again, when – when everyone around was playing at their best, whatever play that might be, when I was calling uh, uh, the right play, when the pocket was there, I mean, Joe was Joe was efficient, you know, in, in, in those terms. So we just, it was a collective collective uh, deal, starting with myself, um, with uh, you know, for for Joe just to. Um, you know, learn from some of the, the experience that went that he had during that game. Um, I have all the confidence in Joe, and and I know he has uh, the confidence in himself, and the players do too. What do you just need to see more from him or better from him uh, from last week moving forward? Well, again, it's it, it's no secret when you're the quarterback in the NFL, when when things go really well, you're going to get all the praise, uh, and when they don't go well like they did on Sunday, you're going to get knocked a little bit. Um, I always put it on myself first because I think execution and, and lack of scoring always falls on, on the play caller, period, especially when you have the players to, to get the job done. Uh, you know, I got to put them in a, a position to be more successful, our offense to be more successful, not put our guys in, in such a bind at times. Um, and, and that's the plan moving forward. What's the challenges uh, facing this Cleveland Browns team, especially with an offensive line that has not played together very much? 
this is a um, going against this defense and this defensive coordinator. Um, he, I was with him in San Francisco. It's very similar to the style of defense we play. Probably even simpler in some in some aspects because they probably don't do as much. I don't think. I don't have obviously their whole menu, but just based off of their tape from a year ago. Uh, so they have a very sound scheme, but on top of it, they have very good players. And I, I, I would think maybe maybe the top pass rush in football, at least at least top three to five. Uh, Miles Garrett is an absolute problem. He's a man on a mission. You could see it last week. You could see it last year. Jadavian Clowney is always going to be a problem. Uh, having to play him in Seattle in 2019, the year we went to the Super Bowl, uh, he wrecked our game. I think we started out 9-0. and We played Seattle, and I think he had a defensive touchdown, three, three sacks, a, a strip uh, sack that he picked up and ran it for a touchdown. So um, they're a problem. They have a a elite corner that they play in the boundary and again they have a sound scheme that they're in year three of their deal uh, they've basically revamped that defense in, in three years with with throughout the draft uh, some free agents and, and it's just gotten better and better every single year so so much respect for what they're doing because you can see from from the ground up from three years ago to now how much they've improved and it is going to be it's just like it's going to be very different from Baltimore in terms of Baltimore, when you play that style of defense, uh, it's going to be messy because they do so much and they have a check for every different little alignment that it's going to be messy. And that's what that's what you know when you're going against the Baltimores, the Wink Martindales of the world. It's just going to be messy. And but but you just you know you're going to break one here or there against this defense. You better earn it uh, because they're not going to give you really anything. They had two miscues last week that led to about 160 yards of offense for Carolina. And outside of that, I think Carolina had 100 yards and 52. Two plays. I mean, it was an absolute struggle all day, except for two major busts that I know um, their players and their defensive staff don't believe they should have. Mike, getting back to the tight ends for a second, um, it's been a while since you guys have had a couple quote unquote pass catching tight ends around here. And uh, is it almost, uh, I mean, everybody talks about the tight end being the quarterback's best friend kind of thing, right? And uh, is it almost too simplistic? Uh, to, to think it's, you know, particularly against an aggressive defense like Cleveland. Yeah, totally, because... Um. To, to think you can get, you know, these guys are going to be great safety valves. So yeah, saying. I mean, it, it's it's week to week, you know. Sometimes they are great safety valves. Sometimes the defense doesn't allow you to be uh, to, to have great safety valves. Sometimes you need those tight ends to help out in the protection with the chips and stuff like that, so they're not going to be the primary route. Um, you know, I think every week's going to uh, end up just being a little bit different. Again, we, you know, it's like we've talked about, I feel like, since April in here, you know, you, you want to get Conklin involved with the ball in his hand. You want to get C.J. the ball. You want to get Garrett, you want to get Corey, you want to get Elijah, you want to get uh, uh, Braxton. Like, I mean, you got one of the better returners in ball that did some awesome stuff for us last year with the ball in his hands. You want to run the ball. You want to use Michael Carter and and, uh, and Brees Hall in the pass game. It's like, holy crap. So every week's going to be a little bit different. You, you always have a plan going through that. I'm not going to express what our plan is, obviously, for Cleveland. But every week's going to be a little bit different. And, you know, my, my job and the rest of the offensive staff's job is to, you know, put – together the best plan possible and the ball's going to go where it goes based on what the what the defense is doing. I talk about it earlier balance. You know, how important is balance especially against the, this defense? Yeah, totally. I mean, you want to be you want to be balanced against any defense you're going against. I mean, there's very few weeks that I've ever been a part of in the NFL that you're just like, hey, we are literally going to throw the ball uh, 50 times in the first half and run the ball five times. Like, it's just it, – that usually doesn't work. Um, you know, so, again, it's – the balance might – mean 50-50 run pass, but it also might mean just finding different ways, again, to get those names that I just said, get them the touches and, and get that ball spread around so a defense can't lock into it. But it, but certainly, I mean, we, we ran the ball well uh, there in the first half. Um, that that, that uh, sack at the opening play of the, the second half, um, I think, really knocked us back, knocked some momentum back, too, because our defense had an incredible stop. I believe that was the drive that Lamar had an incredible run on third and nine. Um, and, you know, that's those are some of the back breaking uh, plays to a defense that, you know, you just you play great defense and there was a great call and there's nothing you can do about it. And then they ended up getting three plays later, they got the punt, you know, and it's just that should be a that should be a momentum swinging play for us on offense. Like, wow, this defense is balling. And, uh, you know, I call the play that, uh, you know, in hindsight, they, they brought the pressure. I wish I wouldn't have called that one. We had everyone locked up. We had a miscue. And, uh, you know, we took the sack and couldn't recover from it. So when you face the pass for a pass rusher, it's like Clowney and also Garrett. <laughs> 
important is communication uh, amongst the offensive line? It's the yeah, communication. No matter who you're playing, is is obviously is key. But um, more importantly, is manning up. You know, again, it's are we going to put even the best of the world tackles alone all day on a guy like Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney? No, that's I don't care who you got. You're never going to do that. But uh, we got to switch it up. We got to keep them honest again with with just uh, uh, you know mixing in different protections, mixing different looks, uh, getting the run game going, all those little things uh, you know that can. Uh, limit a pass rush. Uh, they're going to make their plays. We know that, you know, and again, they're going to make you earn it. I thought uh, when you look at it, and people aren't going to want to hear this, but I thought um, New England did as good of a job as anyone last year, uh, and it took 16 plays uh, for them to score on that opening drive, you know, I mean, because that's what Cleveland makes you do. They make you earn it, you know. So uh, our guys got to be ready to, to do it every single play because the moment we have a hiccup, that's a lot of times when against a defense like this, that's when a drive ends, you know. So our guys got to be re uh, ready to play for 60 minutes, and I believe they will. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks guys.